Welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. Of course, I am Lionel in Canada. We have our co-host introduce himself real quick there. Robert in Nashville, Tennessee, just outside. Um, yeah. Sorry, just outside Nashville, Tennessee in <laughs> the U.S. of A. There you go. <laughs> uh, speaking of um, speaking of which, we all know that there's some uh, news. Uh, some people are going to be jumping up and down. Uh, and there might be a few sad people about it. Ray Gunn has quit. <laughs> we should have a ticker at the bottom. <laughs> Film at eleven. Ray, <laughs> that's actually you know I I so I'm sorry. Listen, Ray Gunn, if you happen to ever see a clip of this, and I doubt it, but if you do, I wish you all the best. You're a human being. You don't deserve to be shat on. Um, yeah. But hopefully you understand where people are coming from. Um, so I, I don't want to be the mean person, but I, there's, there's a lot of funny to it. I'm sorry. Um, there is. I, I, there is. Not that she's quitting because of, of that. Um, if she enjoys doing what she's doing and she, she wants to do it and all the power to her. And apparently what she's doing is she, she says, I still enjoy breaking, uh, but I do it at home. Um, so, you know, good on you. You're a human being. You, you deserve to be happy. We'll, we'll leave it at that. I had my laughter. Make, make, make uh, bunch of the actual world news. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll leave it to Robert to say this uh, because yes. I don't even want it coming out of my mouth. Um, yeah, so obviously everybody knows it was the uh, elections in the U.S. yesterday. And yes, Donald Trump has won a re-election and is now the 47th president of the United States for a second term. And... Yeah. Um, you know, I have we don't talk heavy politics on this channel, so we're not going to get into all the rights and wrongs yeah. and this and that's. Um, I, I I think Lionel and I think the same about the whole situation, and then there's a lot of people who don't, so we're just kind of kind of leave it at that. However, yeah, um, I will say that it's pretty. I'm not even sure what to think about it, honestly, considering everything that's happened between the insurrection issue and him being actually found guilty, uh, uh, you know, money issues, and and yet he's still uh, reelected as the 47th president of the United States. So yeah, nobody cares. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and here's the part that's that I'm mind boggled about. I I had a feeling that there was a chance that he was going to win. And and I honestly thought if he did, it would be a close thing, and Kamala would would concede easily uh, and do the right thing. But you know, instead, have you ever seen any of those videos on YouTube where they show those landslides and people are running for their lives? Yeah, it, 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 I that's what last it. night felt like. And I tell you something, I fell asleep uh, yeah. before before they even got. Uh, I think California had just been announced when I fell asleep. I woke up at three thirty in the morning, and they hadn't finished counting yet. But he well, he he had already won. It yeah, but already he done. he didn't win in California. California's no, no, he his, didn't win in California. I'm talking about like oh completely. right, yeah, yeah. And where where I knew that was going to happen was when he was at two hundred, and she was at uh, uh sorry, he was at I think he was almost at two hundred, and she was at forty five. Uh, and by the time she hit. Uh, 145 he was already at 230 or something like that so it, well, it, there was like and and the other thing too is in this this one is where i knew it was going to happen when they announced pennsylvania i was like no it's over done yeah i, I stayed up to about 130 because i was following it pretty close and once he hit 267 i'm like that's it there's no coming yeah, no back this. Can't. because <laughs> he got all sudden they announced wisconsin it was announced pennsylvania they he got georgia yeah, i mean and but those the, are huge, you know, battle. Yeah, now states, the Georgia so. one doesn't surprise me, but if if she had taken Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and um uh, yeah, help me out, the other state next to Wisconsin, what's wrong with me? Michigan. <laughs> Michigan, thank you. Uh and, and everything on the you know, uh, western seaboard, um, including Nevada, then she still could have won. But the the problem is you lose, you don't get Georgia and Pennsylvania. I don't care what else you're getting. New York, California, and Oregon are not going to win you an election. Now, I know she got more states than that, but. I, I, yeah. Though, I mean, you know, like literally the two biggest states she got. Yes, New York. Yes, California. 
but yeah. Oregon was if I, am I wrong was that the next biggest one she got which isn't big it was like 10 or 12 in Oregon or am I thinking of Washington um I'm not sure to be honest with you as to what uh, electoral votes Washington yeah. and Oregon have but yeah um it's not a, it's when not you, a massive amount but it, it 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 would have been a nice contributory yeah. factor had she managed to get Pennsylvania Wisconsin and so on yeah, when you when you lose those three real key uh, states, and and with all the others going like right now, I just looked. Um, he's at two hundred ninety five electoral votes. She's at two twenty six. Nevada and Arizona still have not finalized their count. So those states are um, leaning and or excuse me, he's leading in those states. So more yeah. than likely, he's going to win those states. He's been leading means, in those states yeah, since yeah. since they were at thirty percent last night. Right. So um, you know. Yeah, um, there's, yeah. So it wouldn't matter anyways because he's already over. So yeah, and it's 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 <laughs> yeah, it's well over the mark. But here, um, here's the bottom line: if I'm not mistaken, and again, I think we'd have to look this up, uh, or maybe you remember because you might have been watching a little bit longer than I was. But I believe that she lost all of the battleground states, or maybe won one of them. Um. Yeah, she I think has. Um... <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I should look at that. Yeah, and and the the other thing is, is and this is this was something that was popping off all over the place. Uh, wealthy women of color, wealthy white women, and not so wealthy women of color were leaning more to 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 uh, Trump than 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 Harris. And like, yeah, because yeah, she <laughs> lost. Yeah, she lost North Carolina. She lost Georgia. She lost Pennsylvania. She lost yep. Wisconsin. Yep. <laughs> <It's> Iowa. <Michigan. laughs> and then it was, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah, um, I don't, I, I, it's like I, I don't remember if she got one of the, I think she was leading briefly in one of the battleground states or it was yeah. close or something like that. But inevitably, Pennsylvania, she point. was originally, they thought she was going to actually take Pennsylvania because it was yeah, so did I. real close. And she was actually a little ahead, but then it, it just landslide. It, it snowballed. Yeah. yeah. It just, it, yeah. everything rolled downhill. And, but and you know, I can, all I can say is, you know, he better put his money where his mouth is. And there's, there's key things that he said he was going to do that I think he needs yeah. to do. And, and in my opinion, the most pressing issue right now is the war in Ukraine and the Israel Gaza issue. I think, and, and I, I, according I to him, yeah. according to him, he's put his foot in his mouth. He's like, I can end this Ukraine war in 24 hours kind of crap. Yeah, well, well, here's you, the problem is that I actually do have a feeling that he's not, uh, that, 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 that in, an, in, an, in a roundabout and possibly really incorrect way, he might be able to do it. And I just mean it's not going to be like a, I'm going to threaten you and we're going to threaten to get involved. I I think he's going to make offers that he's not supposed to make as a president of the United States to get Russia to back off. And, and he's yeah, not going to pay the price for it because he can do whatever he wants. He's a he's on a second term, and he's got. And let's just be very clear: the House all red, the Senate very much red and we already know about the supreme court there is no democratic representation that has power at right now in the u.s government now yeah. again if i don't if listen if you're a republican and you're like i donald trump i don't like but republicans that i am you know you're a republican remember if you've got nobody to actually fight against solid policies in one direction you will inevitably lose your rights it's just the way it is every government that has no competition ends up being very dictator like and it's it's just the way it is so that's the part that scares me the most if the senate yeah. or the house either one of them had even one seat over the you know the line yeah. Then I'd be okay. All right. Well, there's going to be arguments. Then they're going to have to work together. But now they don't, and that's something to to be serious about. They don't have to work with anybody at all, and it scares me about yeah. Canada because I know everybody says, "Well, Canada, he'll you know he'll get along with Trudeau." If this is you, you know, segue to this one. 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that was definitely my next point. And I read a couple articles today in how you know, Trudeau. Water, by the way, I'm kidding. It's water. <laughs> Trudeau offered uh, his congratulatory, you know, hey, um, you know, congratulations. He made a statement that says that the Canada U.S. friendship is the envy of the world. Um, I, I think that's going a little far, <laughs> honestly, but obviously yeah, we are we are super. We, yeah. And, and it's not to downplay our, you know, friendship and our partnership in North America because it's tight and it's strong. However, here's yeah. two key things. And I, I really want your take on this. Okay. Um, that I read in this article. Number one, well, first off, one of Trump's plans is to put like a 10% tariff tax on all imported goods, which is he's wanting to try to force manufacturing in the States. Right. Oh yeah. Well, we, this was something he was talking about in his previous presidency. Right. Well, obviously that includes Canada. Yeah, <laughs> and so they're like, um, okay, so you're going to tax and tariff your most allied, you know, partner. Um, so I think, you know, Trudeau might be trying to like butter him up because I was reading the article where they feel like that Trudeau might try to get concessions to where though if he does that now there's there's no guarantee he's absolutely going to do that but that's kind of his um that's been one of his things this whole campaign that trudeau can you know get it to where he can somehow get concessions of those tariffs he, he's not going to be able to do anything because he, i mean he's going to have very little time because first of all trump is not president until january uh help me out here fifth i think uh, is when the yeah. he Gets, um, you know, sworn and then of course, there's you know some things to do, and he's going to have to sit down in front of the press sure. and, and do his weird, you know, um, where's you know, I need something to hold. So, well, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take a while for. I, I, I got, I got emotion. nothing to talk about, but just pretend that this is a folded, you know, a, a, you know, a piece of paper, and I've just signed it. Uh, yeah. uh, you all remember that, right? Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> you know, let's give him benefit of the doubt. Maybe he won't do it this time. <laughs> but but Trudeau is 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 uh, not going to win the next election. Uh, nobody nobody's going to vote for him. Yeah, uh, and when I say nobody, I mean uh, the Liberals may actually lose their official party status. That's something that happens in Canada, by the way, because we have more than one party and technically there's no limitation to how many parties you can have uh, there's always two big ones and then there's a third one that may eat into that and be, and can can you know yeah. uh you know lean with one or the other to get things done right so but the thing is is and this has happened before uh the original conservative party which would have been like your republicans um they had done such a piss poor job for several years that when there was somebody that came along that they said, uh, yeah, I think we want to, you know, listen to this guy now. I, I think he's going to do a better job. And everything he said made sense. Everything the other people were saying didn't make sense. And er and the, the country came out in at that time, record number, record numbers voted like nobody's business. It was Jean Chrétien, by the way, or as you Americans might say, John Cretchen. <laughs> Anyways, um, and and he it's funny too because he had this thing where he, he talks like this a little bit, right? And he has accent, very heavy French, very heavy French accent, French Canadian. And uh, somebody made fun of him on TV, so he comes out and he says, "You know, you you should make fun, and you think people vote uh, this way for that. Well, at least I don't talk out of both sides of my mouth." <laughs> I swear he did that. He said that. And people just went, yeah. So they, yeah. They, they voted so heavily liberal or what would be similar to your Democratic Party, uh, that election that uh, the conservative party, I think, went from a majority of seats down to only like six seats or something like that. They were below what is considered what they have to have for official party status. They can still be a party, but they have zero power. They, they, they lose voting rights in certain areas. So, I mean, like they can vote on your, you know, your normal things, you know, everybody has a vote, blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. but they can't have anybody in the cabinet. They can't, you know, so on and so on. Um, 
And it's it's it, it, they in order to get back to to official party status, no one would believe in them, no matter who, who they tried to get. So they merged a party that was extremely popular in Alberta, British Company, and parts of Saskatchewan with what was left over of the Conservative Party, and they called them something else. I can't remember what they, what they called themselves. They gained a little bit, but people still didn't trust them because they were way too far right leaning way too far so they kind of just went all right let's just completely put it together and then they call themselves the new democratic party not do yeah, sorry that's the ndp uh i can't remember what they call themselves uh whatever it is it did the new conservative party whatever uh and now they're just considered the conservatives and people forget that it's not the same conservative party it's kind of like you had a different party prior to the democratic party if i'm not mistaken wasn't it because I think the Republicans were there before the Democrats. Am I wrong about that? Well, it was another party I, originally. That party goes way back, but there's always I been eighteen uh, something, for God's sake. But yeah, I I don't know, but I, I know that um you know a lot of times you'll have an independent um that runs. Uh, well, yeah, but, Ross Pro comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, and and really anything outside of the Republican or Democratic you know, nomination is really just a vote stealer. It, 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 there's, yeah. there's never been a non main party winner, right? There's never yeah, been an independent you winner. You have a two party system. If somebody tried to start another party, it wouldn't work very well because of the way your system goes. The, with the, uh, uh, the electoral college, um, if there was somebody else that was going to get those, they would be useless in the presidential race because you have to get to 270. So if somebody else did run and they did too well, then the Electoral College in one or more states would have to go, all right, uh, who was the next closest? Right? So yeah, it, would kind of make, it would kind of make it useless. Yeah, like, so. see, in this election here, um, you had um, someone named Jill Stein, don't know who it is, that ran as the Green Party. I don't even know what the Green Party stands for. And then you have Robert Kennedy that ran as an independent. Um Wait, 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 wait. Robert Kennedy ran as an independent? Mm -hmm. I didn't even hear any news about that. Well, he got 600,000 votes. <laughs> that is not news. <laughs> why the hell? Why wouldn't they? I mean, I know not everybody trusts a Kennedy, and maybe it would have been a disaster, but could it have been worse than losing? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they should have had him run just on the name alone. <laughs> he might have done better i don't know yeah. i don't know his policy ideas so yeah. no idea um so i mean it's you know and if i'm not mistaken i think um didn't they have, i think there's a li libertarian party or something uh, um, yeah i think he'd be does anybody i don't know anybody it, it, again it, it it there's it all it all it does is just take that you know six hundred thousand or a million votes away from whatever yeah. candidate you might have voted for it doesn't really amount to anything it never has ross perot was the if i remember correctly i could be wrong so if if i'm mistaken and someone knows please put it in the comments let me know because i don't mind being corrected if i'm incorrect but i think ross perot probably was one of the most successful independent candidates that i've ever seen run and i voted for ross perot I no, thought well, his view. I would have voted I, for him too, to be honest with you, if I was an American. I thought his policies, and I, I really liked him as a businessman. I just thought he was super intelligent, and I thought he would have done a great job. But obviously, he did not win. But um, I, I, I voted for Ross Perot. I, I thought he would have been a good president. But you know. Oh crap! That came up in the wrong spot. I hate it when that happens. Let's turn that off. <laughs> uh, I have no way of opening something. Sorry about that. My background. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. So, but there's another aspect of this whole Trudeau thing outside of the um, tariff is that they feel the Canadian government as a whole, not so much Trudeau, is worried about immigration because what they think might happen, because, you know, Trump's whole thing. Oh, crap. I, I, I am terribly sorry. <laughs> My 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 partner over there is playing with buttons he probably shouldn't be playing with. <laughs> but uh let me just 
<laughs> re <laughs> rephrase that again <laughs> a after after I put myself on the right side of the screen. No, no don't what, put what, me back what, on. I, I have a reason what? for for. Okay. Well, now the screen is completely blank. I, I'm not sure what is going on right now. It's not blank. Trust me. You're, my screen is my 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 picture. Mine is white. Uh, well, you were there, and now you're back again. Trust no. me, you're you're running on the screen. Okay, now I am. <laughs> Good grief! This is, what? This is gonna have to be something that's gonna end up. We're gonna go viral because oh, of this right now. Gosh. Okay, I yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I I I'd lost my whole train of thought. Um, immigration because Trump's whole plan is to kick out all the illegal immigrants, and right. if he does that. Canada feels like they might end up with this huge influx of immigrants leaving the states to go into Canada to avoid deportation. Right. So um, as to whether, you know, that's going to happen or not, I mean, who knows, but that's well, the other aspect of, of this whole thing is that they feel like, that you know, with Trump now in power, um, it's going to cause a couple of rifts between the U.S. and Canada for those couple of reasons. But I, I don't know, you know, like how your, you know, immigration situation is, and, um, you know, I, yeah, you know, I mean, you could probably obviously speak to that, you know, more than I could. Um, our, our immigration situation is uh, pretty much the exact reverse. So any relationship that Trudeau tries to make sound like it's going to be as great with Trump isn't going to work because he's been making announcements all about how he wants to open up the borders for more people. Um, the, the issue here is that, well, we're a very open nation and we're like, you know, we, we want all this different culture and we love to integrate this stuff into our culture generally as a country um we also want to be able to ha have hold maintain jobs get a job um but there are so many people that are coming in so fast that this just the jobs are falling out the window uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's becoming an issue there's a lot of people that are having problems and no, it's not the, you know, that, oh, well, there's a bunch of people from this country that are that color that are committing crimes. It's not that that's not the thing. Um, it's, <laughs> it's literally I, great. You come here, you work hard. That's that's fantastic. The, the unfortunate problem is, 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 is what about the guy who would have got the job had this guy not showed up and the boss who hired the guy? Is high, is now hiring them because they're like, well, I, I these guys can speak the language of half the people in this warehouse, and half of them are not speaking English. Uh, this yeah. is Canada. You're not speaking French and you're not speaking English, and I can't. I, you know, I've I've actually had to actually, I've applied for jobs in, in an area not far from where I live, where it's actually they said must be able to speak Mandarin, and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? This isn't Chinatown. I understand if I'm applying for a red restaurant in Chinatown, but why do I need to speak Mandarin to work in a warehouse in Canada? Like, yeah. Again, this is not a racist thing. Okay. This is, this is a, I was born and raised here. If I go to China, I have to speak Chinese to get a job. I guarantee it. But do you think for one second, the Chinese government, and it's a bad example because they're communists, but it's just, do you think for one second the Chinese government would allow somebody to set up a business and say you must speak English to work there? No. Right. And quite frankly, they probably don't do it in France. Although, it, with all, you know, in, re, in reality, if anywhere in Europe, if you work anywhere where there's going to be a lot of tourism, you're probably an English speaker anyways, even if it's poor English. But yeah, well, you know, unbeknownst to me, and I did not know this until I went to to Berlin. I mean, um, sorry, Belgium. Is that the country of Belgium has three primary languages? Yes, they have Flemish, they have 
French and they have German. German. And I did not know about Flemish. So that was a new that's, one to me. That's but, their main language, really, originally. Well, that's yeah. but that's a very small portion of the population, and no, it's it mostly northern portion of Belgium. Yeah. Right. That's what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about yeah. now. It is, it is now. If you went back 500 years, it would be different. Well, maybe uh, so, but it'd be mainly Flemish and Germanic. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, the the the, the walking guide that we had, um, he was born and raised in Belgium, actually in yeah. Brussels, and. He was fluent in English and in French. And he says it's really irritating. And, and a lot of the um, real hardcore, like Flemish, French speaking, they don't like each other because none oh, of them really? can understand each other because yeah. they, they like refuse to learn the other language because they feel like theirs should be the primary and vice yeah, versa. Well, they're, so, they're still, yeah. yeah, they're still wildly different for starters. Um, it's not quite like high German and low German where some of the words at least resemble. Uh, but, I mean, if you speak only low German, then there's a chance you're not going to get on very well in certain parts of Germany where everyone speaks high German. So, uh, Yeah, it was just crazy to me because I think about the U.S. In French. Yeah, I think about the yeah. U.S. It's like, you know, that's like having the state of Texas with three languages. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would be the third language in Texas? No, I'm saying as far as size, you know, kind of in comparison, like, you know. Oh, okay. Okay, I get you. Yeah. It's yeah. like. Belgium is a lot smaller than Texas. It would be probably closer to a. a well, you get my point. I'm just yeah, trying I to make. I, mean, I, I can go it. from coast to coast and everybody just speaks English. I don't have to worry like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to the Flemish side of, you know, Texas. That no one yeah, understands but in me. All fairness, there's some, part, there's some parts uh, of, of, of the southern U.S. where you might have to ask them to repeat themselves well only because they don't speak good english but they speak english <laughs> that's the difference well, no that's not necessarily they could be speaking creole if, if, if it's if it's uh english french creole which may even include yeah. spanish at this point in, in time now it, it, it's been so so many so many years yeah, yeah, I know it's a weird well, segue. There, there has been some Louisiana you know, people that I, I didn't understand. So that's do you, do you know where Cajuns came from? Well, the whole thing used to be British, you know, owned. But do you know where Cajuns came from? Well, no, I don't know where Cajuns came from. Probably Canada. Cajun. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 is what was known at the time as Acadia? Basically, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. Oh, area. okay. Nova well, Scotia yeah. primarily and New Brunswick. Um, yeah. and it was called Acadia. Um, so the Acadians, and I don't actually listen. I have to brush up on my history, but they were basically get get out. Uh, <laughs> just to be blunt. Uh, so they ended up with a bunch of other different people from other areas that were very similar to the Acadians, uh, and made the brunt the you know the largest amount of the people that went to what is now uh, New Orleans, um, and. Of course, over time, Acadians, they basically say Cadians instead of Acadians, and that turned into Acadians, Cajuns, Cajuns. <laughs> Cajuns. Um, yep, the evolution of Cajuns. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. And, and, and quite frankly, the, the, the N-word, um, the origins of the N-word originally are very similar, to be honest with you. We're not going to say it, obviously. Yeah, um, well. But it, it comes from uh, the, the original word, used to describe a, a colored person um yeah that turned into that word and again we're not gonna have but but that's what i'm saying it's just that the accents from certain areas further down south uh they they moved on in a different direction than people that were further north or east or west in, in the u.s because it's such a huge country and different cultures made up the different areas and the accents got different Sure. And so oh, yeah, some course. words, basically, you don't recognize them as having an origin of this word over here. So it is kind of funny because originally I didn't know about the Acadian Cajun thing. And I, I just thought it sounded like it. that's probably what it meant. So I actually researched it. And, as, and yes, according to linguists, proper linguists, <laughs> uh, that is how the word Cajun came about as uh, uh, it just evolved from the word Cadian which was shortened from Acadian. So there you have it. 
Well, not uh, sure how we got all, off all, on that every, uh, the, the tangent yeah, about um, languages and everybody, and everybody down there live, is actually originally Canadian. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just so, um, Canada now. That's my spiel on uh, Canada and Trudeau and yeah, Trump yeah. and you know we'll I guess have to see how that plays out and you know, unless you have some uh, yeah. final thoughts on those issues as to what you think is going to happen, I guess we can we can kind of close the chapter on that yeah. subject because I, I didn't really want to have a I whole. Know, you know what I did? Yeah, the, but the, we, that's why I said we were we 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 ran off with it <laughs> because uh, I didn't want to keep going on it too long, anyways. So let's yeah. let's do the worst segue ever and just get back into some technology. This, <laughs> in my opinion, why did my voice crack? This, what the hell was that? <laughs> this is CNN. No, I don't know, uh, but be careful what push button you push, and you don't start flipping screens and cutting me off. And <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give I'll give it my best. I'll give it my best. Um. Well, uh, this this is basically about Google Pixels, uh, specifically the Pixel Nine. But I imagine, you know, some of the other phones are doing a little good too, because you know, like sales, and you can get like a Pixel Eight Pro for like two hundred dollars right now in some places. Um, and Black Friday hasn't even hit yet, so uh, the Pixel Nine series is going on sale and all kinds of stuff. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, we had mentioned before, we talked about this before, and I remember when the Pixel was first, the Pixel 9 series was coming out, uh, and even after it came out, I did say, uh, and we talked about this again more than once, that that Google with the Pixel series is not in competition with Samsung. They're not trying to beat Samsung, and they're not going to. Uh, and Samsung knows it. <laughs> they're, they're just in bed together. Exactly, but not in every aspect. Just no. enough that they know that they can pat each other on the back and go their separate ways and come back and kiss once in a while. <laughs> and I said a long time ago that this relationship is going to be what is going to not only make Google's Pixel series more successful, but it's going to make Samsung smartphones way more enjoyable to use for people who otherwise don't want a Samsung phone because it has more complicated stuff than a Pixel does. More stuff, period, but more complicated for somebody who just wants that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. In any case, but I also said that that uh, what they're in competition with is an Apple. Uh, is, uh, sorry, with Apple. And of course, you might laugh and you might think, what? They can't beat Apple? No, they're not. If they did beat Apple, it would take them another 20 to 50 years probably. Uh, and by then, Apple may fall out the window. But with some other company that doesn't even exist right now might come along and beat Apple and Samsung and Google. This happens. Go out through history. Nobody continues to be on top forever. Someone else comes along. I used to own a Sylvania TV. Do you have a Sylvania TV? No. Do they make them? No. <laughs> it happens, right? Hitachi. Would you buy a Hitachi TV right now? I haven't heard that name in forever. Exactly. Holy cow. Thank you very much. How about a Lloyd's stereo? I mean, they were bottom of the line anyways, but they don't make them either. So it, stuff moves on, right? Um, in the meantime, the news seems to have come out that it seems that uh, Google, um, the Pixel series, if you look from September onwards, is, wow, I can see my own... <laughs> I'm seeing my mouse twice. Um, anyways, it's they 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 they're basically going. Um, well, that's why because I've got the mouse going on that. And there we go. They're 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 going uphill, <laughs> and they've they've uh, they've pretty much gotten around that thirteen fourteen percent. And before you think, oh well, that's not very much. Well, how many i uh, not iPads? Sorry, uh, iMacs. Do you think it's sold worldwide in percentage? Somewhere around 13 to 14 percent, I think, in comparison to uh, Windows PCs or, or any kind of PC that can run Windows or Linux for that matter, they have a very tiny market, but it's a lot of phone or sorry, computers in the long run. It's a lot. But the other thing is look at this is going down at almost the same rate. Samsung has been very stable. Forget about this tiny little dip, that's nothing. Everybody's pretty much had a dip, right? They had a dip. Google was, they dipped a little earlier and then they kind of plateaued and then now they're going up. 
But Samsung, there is a slight rise. You just can't see it in you can't see it in there. But yeah, it's 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 Apple that went down at the same time Google went up. That's got to be more than a coincidence. Um, yeah, I find it odd. In December of 2023, Samsung took a hard dip, and yeah. the Apple went up. Samsung, I mean, I think that has to do with because Samsung doesn't even release their stuff until January, February. Well, yeah, and, exactly. And you, you see know, Apple they, comes you out in the end up. of the year. But yeah. look at where look at where Samsung did start going up a little bit again. It was kind of steady, but then it was a bit a bit of a jump. Um, and it, oh, sorry, I'm over here. Uh, and and it, yeah. the reason for that is because when Samsung phones come out, it's not like Apple. People don't line up around the block to get it. They wait to see if the bugs are going to get squashed and then they buy it and they wait for the first sales and then they buy it, but they buy it in huge. And I mean, huge numbers. So while this might look like a small line for them, that's a percentage number of what they have. We're or, uh, sorry. This is just North America. Uh, sorry. Just United States. Matter of fact. Yeah. Um, so uh, going in, in this area where they had that drop down, uh, what was that? What does that say? 20%? Uh, I need to put my glasses on to see that up close. Uh, it's uh, just it, it's just under. Yeah, and they dropped somewhere on 18-ish or, or something like that. But then they went back up to somewhere around 19. And they're still hovering around that, you know, 18, 19, you know, 17, 18, you know, percent. And again, that's U.S. Worldwide, Samsung has is way, way higher than, than Apple. Um, everywhere else in the world, Samsung is absolute king. Well, not everywhere. China, not China, but, you know. Uh, yeah. most places like you know places like Europe and, and and you know South America stuff. Samsung is very popular. Um, but yeah, that's where they start coming down around the same time. So there was people that were more people buying there, and Samsung and some of them were were switching over. Uh, but based on stuff that I've seen on on T on TV, I sorry on YouTube, articles I've read on the internet, some of those people who switch to iPhone switch start switching back. And some of them decided to wait it out and try out a Pixel. And I've seen numerous videos and articles where people have said, I've been an iPhone user for the last five years. I used to have Android and I switched back. Or I've been an iPhone user my entire adult life and I, I just got sick of it and I want to try it, you know, Android. And I figured I'd try something that everyone is saying is going to be the closest experience to having an iPhone because, you, you know, one ecosystem. I mean, Samsung does that too, but it does it with a lot of extra stuff. And I say that not in a bad way. Samsung's making Samsung makes great devices, uh, but Google uh, is deliberately trying to to you know emulate what Apple is doing, and it appears to be working. Uh, will yeah. they ever get Apple's numbers? No, because they don't have a market like Apple does. But those numbers mean something and will they fall off a little bit yes but you know what it's the shopping season and people buy stuff and mm -hmm. they're gonna buy pixels a lot more between now and a little bit after uh, new year's so which has always baffled me why samsung does not have the same kind of release schedule as the other two and why they do it at the beginning of the year because i think they miss the whole opportunity in that this big you know christmas sales I cycle think they need black to. friday That's, and all that no i agree I but i don't think they need to i don't think they want to overdo what they have because when they do that there there's two things that are going to happen one they're stuck in too much of a competition it's watered down and everybody's numbers will go down because not everyone's going to jump on the samsung a lot a lot of people would but not everybody would so they're going to get watered down sales there's people that are waiting for Samsung's new phone. And the other thing, and this is the biggest deal, the chips that come out that are available for testing and eventually ready to put in a device, they're going to get announced in like May, June, fully testing in July, August, and implemented into devices somewhere around now, meaning Samsung is already starting their manufacturing process and testing with the chips that everyone else is going to be stupidly jealous about. Well, everyone except Apple, because the process that they're using is already ahead of everybody uh, for that. 
But again, uh, not again, so I'm saying this now. It should be noted if, if for anybody who doesn't know, Apple's extra powerful chips don't mean anything in a comparison state because they have a totally different type of operating system. The way theirs works, they don't even need as much RAM. It's technically more efficient, but it's also got limitations that Android does not inherently have. Yeah, this is different. I'm just saying, in case Craig McCann of sees this, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's in, it's it's definitely interesting. I would not have expected it to be um, that significant of a change because that's significant. That, yeah. That's a that's yeah. a big. That's a, that's a lot. It it's 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 huge and significant as you as you put it, um, and it's great news for anybody who loves, you know, their Pixel phones and anything else Google device wise because it 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 basically means Google's going to put their foot down harder even. They've had well, a it's term plan, and even people at Google said it was going to be years before they were going to. I think one of them even said they didn't use the word viable, but they were hinting at the term that it would be several years or more before it would be something that would be able to sustain itself. And it looks like this is going to be the first one that comes close to it. And I say comes close because it will not get these kinds of sales numbers throughout the entire calendar year. The Pixel yeah. 10 with the first fully original TSMC manufactured tensor chip is going to be the first really successful out of the gate and fully successful throughout the season. Uh, throughout all four seasons, rather, uh, all four quarters. Um, and that's going to be the big the big one. Um, and they're likely going to do something special because it's going to be the, basically the 10th anniversary. So, Well, everybody has said that they feel like Google really hit it out of the park hardware-wise with the 9, and that it's very 100%. Apple-esque. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that has yeah, a right. lot to do when you look at it and people hold it and they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, now I don't, even though they didn't have to before that, you know, now they don't have to be embarrassed <laughs> you know, to, I, I know, to I know. have it, but it's, you know, it's a good looking phone. So I, I think, um, yeah, you know, I know I everybody's they definitely, seen it already, right? It's not like it hasn't been seen the case, but first of all, that's just a phone. So what, right? But when you look at the back of it, if I cover the, oh, you can't even see because the light's there. If I cover the back of it, uh, and you imagine that there's an Apple logo. Can I hold this? There we go. And you imagine there's an Apple logo there instead. This phone is going, it looks almost the same as an iPhone sitting there like that. But yeah. this is distinctly Google. And that's yeah. the big thing. It's got literally the brightest screen on a phone regularly available in, in, in North America. And you, you know, that is because uh, some other one, uh, maybe Xiaomi or something came out with one that's actually slightly brighter. But again, that is so rare that it would ever get into that brightness level. Uh, and what you have jumping through hoops, this phone can actually reach its peak brightness way easier. You don't actually have to put it in, uh, well, no, actually you do. You have to put it in the, um, what is it called? The, uh, not automatic, what's the word for it? Adaptive. <laughs> adaptive, thank you. The adaptive screen brightness. And when you go outside and it's brighter, this thing just gets, it's like if I if I did this on adaptive brightness, it would probably even brighten up more than it is. And I've got it at like 100%. Yeah, but see, I don't even, uh, on my S23, I run it not, you know, 24 seven at about 90%. I, I, 100%, I just don't need it that bright. I, I never have. You know, the, the light is shown. Well, well, that's a little bit too much now. <laughs> it's literally the light coming right off of it. See, now that actually, that won't happen with the S24, uh, uh, at least the, the main one, the, the biggest one, the plus or whatever they call it, because it has that uh, anti glare screen thing on it. Yours, does yeah. yours have that too? Or is that, um, is that it, it introduced in the 24? Uh, it doesn't have any anti glare on it. Okay, so it's a, that's twenty four and up that's going to have that. I want a screen um, that has anti fingerprint. See, this, <laughs> got, this, this this just got dimmer on me. Oh, now it's getting brighter, right? And then I hold it down like this, and it gets dimmer because the light's not on it. Oh, it just got really dim. So if yeah, I the only it, thing I use adaptive brightness on is my watch. Brighter? Did you see that? I uh, yeah, I don't I don't use adaptive brightness on my phone. I'm gonna, I nor I normally I don't either. I actually hate it. But there's an update 
um, that will actually make this get uh, work better. Uh, I'm not putting it on right now because I'm doing busy doing this. Okay, I'm going to show you one more time. Watch, watch, watch it get brighter. See that? Yes, we, like, we, we see it. It works <laughs> really well. And that's a dark picture. That's a very dark picture. I, I'm just happy about it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little happy about it. But because uh, it works great. But, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. I'd like to thank uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Academy. <laughs> All right, that's it. I got to turn that off because I, I like you. I don't really like adaptive brightness. I just want I just want my screen brightness at one hundred percent. That's crazy, isn't it? One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I run mine at ninety. I don't. I don't. I don't need it that bright. I can't help it. I I love my brightness on it. Oh, me too. I, I like a bright it's, screen too. But colors because the colors I get I get more accurate colors because it, it, yeah. It, the brighter it is, the more accurate your colors are actually going to be. As soon as you start taking the dimness, putting more dimness into it, taking the brightness out, the colors that are representing on the screen are not accurate or not as Oh, accurate. yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and that's something that directors take into account when they realize, okay, this is going to play at a theater on a screen. There's only so much color that's going to come out of this. So it's got to be remastered differently for DVD or streaming. Because they expect it now to be, you know, uh, Dolby Vision and HDR 10 plus and stuff. So they have to have that extra brightness. So they have to actually have it colored differently for streaming than they do for the theater. Unless they're using the digital thing, right? And it's actually high definition or high definition. I mean, ultra HDR stuff in the theater, which can't really be HDR. It's all coming from light anyways. But uh, it it uh, so it, that, that's a different technology all altogether. All it's 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 really fascinating to me as somebody who fancies himself an amateur photographer. But yeah, uh, I digress. We've gone on with that long enough. All right. Yeah, do we have any no. other? Do you have any other tech news we want to touch on before we you know uh, mosey on out? Uh, no, that was it. I think that's uh, kind of the key uh, information. I, I haven't, I think everything, the whole world's been so caught up with the whole election cycle. Um, yeah. I just don't, there just hasn't been a lot of, you know, I mean, there has been, but not anything that's yeah. groundbreaking. That I've I kind of miss the days when, when almost all of the uh, Canadian elections were in the same year as the American elections, because ours are basically October. Uh, yours November, our guy would get sworn in in several weeks. Your guy would get sworn in a few weeks later. And the first thing they would do is sit down together. It was traditional for decades that the Canadian prime minister and the U.S. new U.S. president would, would the first visit would be one to the other. First phone call would be to each other. Somehow that just fell apart in the last few elections. Uh, and it, it, it was bothersome. Um, but when they were the same year, uh, a lot of their stuff, when they campaigned, it made, I mean, it didn't matter as much to, you know, to a U.S. president talking to somebody in Alabama, but when they, when they went to places like, you know, North Dakota or Minnesota anywhere or, or Minnesota, and I don't mean DC, but Washington, the state, right. Um, and they were campaigning, they would talk about relations with Canada. And nor they, like if they went to Albany, for instance, they would talk about relations with Canada. And by the way, in the past, presidential hopefuls would actually go to places like Albany. You'd catch Trump going to Albany, would you? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. And with that, yeah. I think there's a lot of stuff that's. <laughs> I don't. There's a lot that's changed that'll never end up being the same. So, but that's okay. I mean, nothing ever stays the same. So, yeah, that's a uh, that's a good point to slide on out. Kind of I a agree. short one this week, but we just had a few things to to talk about, but very poignant and excellent yeah. information. So we'll. Uh, We'll see how these next few months go rolling on. I mean, obviously, we got a couple months before he's even in the office. So we'll, we'll. enjoy the blissful. Never mind. Um. 
Well, I said it had been blissful, but yeah. Oh, I, I know what you're <laughs> um, So listen, uh, I have been struggling uh, for a season and, and a half <laughs> of our podcast to come up with uh, some catchy, you know, goodbye thing. Everyone has something. Robert's got one. The guest comes on. He's got 10,000 times better than me because uh, I got nothing. So I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal someone else's. <laughs> yes, I used to watch Stampede Wrestling. Ed Whalen, if you see this, is he alive? Oh my God, I'm embarrassed. I didn't even know. Ed Whalen, if you or any of your family see this, I'm not trying to diss you and technically steal your stuff. It's because I think you're one of the greatest wrestling announcers or play by play guys, whatever you want to call it, uh, ever. So I'm going to say it from my end. Uh, I'm Lionel in Toronto. And in the meantime, and in between time, I can't say that's another edition of Stampede Wrestling, but it is another edition of this podcast. <laughs> We're not and I am Robert in the U.S., and uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. <laughs>